Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of my LEGO Train Container Terminal. In this episode we're going to actually move a few containers fully automatically, so that's going to be interesting. But first I'm going to show you the things that I've changed to make it all work in automatic mode. So let's start on top of the train here. What you see here are two servo motors from mindsensors.com. Um, this is no product placement, I already had them and uh, they work just fine. And these are specialized for the um, pneumatic valves. And these valves control the arm and the grabber. So now they're motorized, I can actually control pneumatic systems from the Arduino. Uh, furthermore, I had also to motorize the crane. Sorry for the bump. Um, and I did that with this motor over here. This is an EV3 motor. And the special thing about this motor or an older NXT motor is that it has a rotary encoder inside. And this is a feedback system that tells you in which position the shaft is. So that way you can make it turn for only a few degrees, for example, or you can make it turn for two revolutions or whatever you want. So um, it has a re resolution of one degree, so 360 pulses per revolution. And with a system like this, I'm able to position the crane exactly the way I want it. In the beginning, I had two motors and uh, also on this side because, you know, good engineering practice, you need two motors. But I don't know what it is, but I had some trouble with, uh, with the second motor. It started behaving a bit strange. I don't know why I couldn't find the, the, the problem. It wasn't software, it wasn't hardware. So I don't know. So I just go with uh, one motor, which uh, actually works perfectly fine as well. All right, now it's time to show you the, uh, the real automated action. So I'm gonna set you up very nicely. Maybe, I don't know if this is the best vantage point. If not, I'm gonna show you also another vantage point. So what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna pick up the first container on the right, put it on the railway car, then it moves to the container further down on the left and it puts it on the monorail. So I'm gonna fire up the compressor and make sure that uh, there's air available and then we're gonna start the system. All right, the compressor is full. Maybe it's nice to see the compressor actually, to see the uh, pressure drop. So let me just move it a bit like this. Is it visible? No, of course not. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So um, I'm gonna enable the system now and you'll see that when some air is used by the pneumatic system, the compressor will start again. You see the uh, pressure is already dropping a bit. And here we go. All right. That works just perfectly fine. I'm very happy with the, uh, with the result. Um, I'm gonna show you this once more in another vantage point. Maybe you'll see something extra, something like this. All right. Let's enable the compressor again. So here we go. Great. Let me just stop the motor a bit, like that, yeah. As you can see, it, it all works just uh, very, very nice. Um, one thing, one variable isn't taken in this operation, and that is the position in which the train and the monorail stop. Maybe there will be a bit of difference, and when you have a bit of difference, then it's already difficult to um, make it this precise. So th that's something that um, I need to figure out if I can stop the train 
within half a stat or so. If not, I need to think up a solution to make it still work. One more thing, and um, that was um, something I didn't think of, but a viewer who cares the name Marien Speck, probably a Dutchman, he said like, well, you got a problem. Because um, what I said in the previous episode was that um, I only needed to lift the container uh, just over the edge of the wagon and that would be enough. But as you can see already here, that the railway cars and the monorail cars don't line up. So when I have actually three cars, which will be the final situation, they don't line up anymore and I definitely have to move the container above another container which is resting already on the monorail car, for example, when I'm unloading. So that means that I have to add height to the, to the crane, uh, the height that I removed one episode ago. <laughs> so I need to, uh, to add it again. So the whole thing becomes a bit higher. Next to that, the other thing I did wrongly in this setup is what you see here is one monorail track. And if you have a look at the layout of the final situation, you'll notice that I've added two monorail tracks below the crane and not one. I did that because I wanted a dedicated loading track and I wanted a dedicated unloading track for the monorail. Since the monorail is a bit slow, so when you're unloading the train, for example, the containers which need to be loaded can already be on their way. And that makes the system a bit faster and a bit more dynamic. And that's what I'm looking for. I try to create as much movement as possible. That means that I have to widen the crane as well. So that's, uh, that's, that's going to be the, uh, the next thing. One last question for you is that I'm going to have two of these cranes. And I want to ask you about the color of the cranes. What do you think? Should the other crane be, which will be in the same neighborhood as, the, as this crane. Should they be the same color or do you say like, well, uh, this is a red one, make also a blue one? Because um, it depends a bit on the um, supports, which are not available in every color. I know they are available in blue and also in uh, yellow, also in green, but green is a very expensive color for the rest of the uh, crane. And they're also available in tan but i don't like that color for the crane so the question is should the second crane be red blue or yellow please let me know by replying on this uh, video share your thoughts and if you have any other comments please let me know and uh, thank you for watching and see you next time bye